I have a friend in New York City who I've known for a long time, a great guy, a great drummer and percussionist. He's also sort of an amateur ethnomusicologist. And he told me something years ago that really made me think. He said that traditional musics of the world tend to be in three or six when they are sacred music. In other words, sacred music from cultures around the world is in three or triple meter. And I thought that was really interesting. And if any of you have any experience studying musics of the world, please let me know if that sounds right to you. Nonetheless, when I play jazz music, traditional jazz music in a waltz style or in three, four or in six, like we're talking about today, I think about this aspect of being sacred. When we're playing in three or thinking about the undercurrent of triplet feel that is in the swing four feel, I think about sort of that sacred element and that what we're doing is special and has meaning. Well, there's a few ways to approach playing in three that I want to go over today. And there's three main headings. Let's get into that now. Welcome to Learn Jazz Bass with Matt Rubicki. As always, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, look for a PDF below. Thanks for joining me today. As I said, we are talking about playing in three or triple meter because some of this really applies to playing in six and 12 and nine too. When we talk about playing in three, four, I just wanted to do a quick review for those of you that may not be as familiar. We're talking about three quarter notes to a bar. When we're talking about playing in six, it can be six quarter notes, but it's most often like six, eight. So six eighth notes to a bar, but it still has that triple feel. These approaches that we're talking about with playing in three, which can sometimes mean sort of just play something in triple meter, these approaches can be applied to three, four or six, eight or 12, eight, depending on how you sort of interpret the music or what the music calls for. But as I say, these basic things can be um, put on top of any of those meters. Now, when we are talking about what approach to use when we're playing in three, a lot of that depends on tempo. Certain of these rhythmic approaches, and that's really what they are, is just a rhythmic approach. We're not talking about notes here. These rhythmic approaches can sound best in certain tempos. So some of them don't really work at very slow tempos or very fast tempos. So it's up to your musicality to get a sense of when to use them. The first thing we'll talk about today is what's called playing in one. And that just means we're playing one note per measure. This is generally for faster tempos or medium to medium fast. And the idea, as I say, is you're just playing what would be notationally a dotted half note. So it's, if the tempo is one, two, three, 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 one, like that. That's the basic idea. Now I've got um, a play along that I'll, I will play with here today. And this is again, Ulysses Owens on drums and Oscar Perez on piano. And this was for uh, my method book for Hal Leonard. And in this chapter, I was talking about the um, flat five uh, added to certain chords. So what I did was I took the basic changes to there is no greater love and put some flat fives in there. So it sounds a little bit different than there is no greater love. That said, here's a short eight measure play along of just playing in one, like we were just talking about. Very basic, yeah? Yeah, not difficult at all. So, one thing though is that when we are playing in one a lot, it can get a little bit stale, right? So, and variety is our friend. We want to add variety to our lines. So at certain tempos, that one we just played can work, but if we slow it down just a touch, there's space to add some extra notes. So this is sort of a subheading of this first tool, playing in one. Playing in one with a little more activity, a little more forward motion, little extra notes that add to the sense of dancing and movement, right? Maybe what those in New Orleans might call lanyap, which to my understanding means that you're getting sort of something for free. So let's take a listen to these same chord changes, these same eight measures, but a little bit slower, and we're gonna add a couple extra notes. That was 
wasn't too complicated, right? Yeah, just adding a little bit extra can make it feel extra good. So let's go to the second tool in our toolbox, so to speak, of playing in three. And that is to divide each bar of three evenly right down the middle. If we've got a bar of three quarter notes, to divide that evenly, we've got two dotted quarter notes. And so this would give you the effect of almost a, what would be called sort of like a metric modulation. It sounds like almost two against three. So if the tempo is one, two, three, one, two, three, one, and two, and three, and one, and two, and three, and two, and three, and one, and two, and three, and one, and two, and three, and one, and two, and three, and. So this approach can add some more rhythmic variety. And let's take a listen to the same eight measures, but approaching from dotted quarter notes. Again, not a really hard concept, but you can have a lot of fun with those dotted quarter notes when you're sort of playing around with the other musicians, and of course, when you're experimenting yourself uh, while playing in three. So moving on now to the sort of third major tool, and that would be simply to play three quarter notes in a bar. You're walking in three, right? It's nothing that's um, revolutionary, but you'll notice that this adds a little bit more sort of push forward. So let's take a listen again to these eight measures, but we're gonna now walk with quarter notes. And the next step here after using these three main tools is of course we can combine them and we can go back and forth between them. Let's take a listen now to 16 measures. So, you know, one repetition of these eight bars and um, we're gonna combine the three things or th three and a half things that we've already spoken of and notice how it adds some more musicality to, uh, to the bass line here. found that a little bit more musical than just the basic tools by themselves. So here's another concept that we can apply when we're playing in three, sort of thinking um, in overall construction or arrangement of our approach to the whole song with our bass lines. And what I mean is we've got these three, three and a half tools. Why not build one after the other? Playing in one, adding a little bit extra of playing in one, then playing with dotted uh, quarter notes, then playing with quarter notes. You'll notice that the intensity sort of builds over time. And that can really work very well when you've got everyone listening and everyone sort of on the same page and you are applying it over sort of a broader amount of time than this example I'll do right here. But here's one chorus of these sort of amended changes to There Is No Greater Love. And what I'm gonna do is start in one, I'll add a little activity, Again, dotted quarter notes and then go to walking. So let's check that out. Hopefully that made some sense for you. Starting in one and sort of moving up, did you get a sense of a little bit of tension building? I hope that you did. It works more effectively when you've got live players with you who, as I say, are on board and sort of have the same plan or at least are listening to you. That helps a lot. So the last sort of thing I wanted to mention was talking about sort of programming things in three. You know, there's not a ton of sort of standard standards that are in three 
naturally. I mean, we have Jitterbug Waltz and False Hot, Someday My Prince Will Come, of course, and there's a few others, but remember that we can take many standards and actually put them in three. For example, all the things you are outside of the standard intro, which is tricky to put in three, but the main melody to all the things you are is very easy to do in three. And you can go so far as to play giant steps in three if you want, as long as you or whoever is playing the melody is of course accommodating for that sort of missing beat. So we're playing in three. So here is one of those great tunes that is in three and that's called Up Jump Spring. And the natural melody and structure of the song calls for a change between these various tools that we've been talking about. So I would recommend that you actually go and listen to the song itself. Here I'll just uh, play with a play along and I'm just gonna improvise some lines in a way that I feel is very musical and will hopefully be helpful to you. that was illuminating for you in some way. I know that it maybe could come off as a little bit obnoxious and I realized that as I was playing it. You know, part of it is that I was trying to sort of make something happen. When you're playing with this sort of clinical play along, right, it's hard to sort of feel like it's alive because it's not, you know? So I'm just trying to sort of make things happen where maybe if I were with live players who were very excellent musicians, I could lay back more. And the same for you. When you're playing with other good musicians, um, you have a chance to sort of relax and take your time. Here I'm trying to sort of make something happen. But that said, I hope that it was, as I say, somewhat helpful or illuminating. And I hope the whole thing was today. Thanks for joining me. As always, remember to subscribe if you haven't. Please like if you didn't. And look for the PDF below. And remember, straight ahead and strive for tone.